We're back talking thoroughbred horse racing right here on Horsepower PSN from the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel and the Horsepower PSN YouTube channel. I'm host Greg DePama. Thanks for tuning in. John Hardoon from the Raggers and Sheets, of course, joining us as we talk thoroughbred horse racing action from Keeneland. And uh, sorry, we've been uh, away for the last couple of weeks. How's it going, John? Good. Well, it certainly wasn't your fault. I mean, you can't control the weather, and uh, thank God you're okay. You lived through it, and uh, certainly couldn't have been a good experience. No, it was not. It was definitely not. Nobody has ever experienced, I'm telling you right now, the only people who have ever experienced stuff like this is the people who have gone through it, because uh, it's you're dealing with the, 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 the take your way of not only the electric, but the internet. And the combination of the two puts you back into Stone Ages. So it's 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 not where you want to be. So uh, yeah, uh, I hope I never have to do it again. I guess it's a lesson. I'll make sure that I uh, prepare myself even better. Uh, but it is what it is. It's behind us. We've missed the last couple of weeks, so we're going to do what we can to give you, as I promised, on our Patreon page. And I also put a little uh, comment out on our horse racing page that uh, here on YouTube that we are going to be doing some bonus coverage uh, over the next month to make up. Uh, for the lost time. Of course, we've got the Breeders' Cup coming up before you know it. So I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot of races that week. Uh, you're going away that week, right, John? Yeah, I'll be in Vegas, but um, I've been there the last couple of years. We've always done the show from there, so it's no problem. As long as uh, the Internet's working and everything's up, you know, it doesn't matter where we are as long as we do the show. Absolutely. All right, so we've got Keeneland today, and we're going to do three races. Two of them are available on Patreon, so don't forget the link in the description. You hit Patreon, matter of fact, you can see it right there on the ticker, just $5 a month, and you get all the bonus races that we provide, and we're going to be doing races 6, 8, and 9 at Keeneland. The two races we're going to be doing on Patreon will be 6 and 9, so check that out only on Patreon. Here on YouTube, we're going to be doing race eight, and that's what we're going to start off with. And this is the gr this is really the biggest race of the weekend uh, at Keeneland, and pretty much all over, I would guess. The Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup Stakes. It's a mile and an eighth turf race for fillies three year olds. The purse is about seven fifty. And who are these uh, fillies? Are these uh, are these some of the top three year olds in the world? Well, it's a grade one. I mean, numbers-wise, they're not. They're certainly faster fillies. But uh, listen, it's the race that they're giving you this weekend. It's a grade one. It's from Keelan. So let's go through it. Yeah, the morning line favorite is uh, She Feels Pretty, the three, a five to two shot. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one of um, uh, DeVoe's horses that has two uh, grade one, actually one grade one win, was at the Breeders' Cup. Uh, last year, finished third in that race as actually the morning line. Actually, that was the uh, favorite of the race. She feels pretty. Um, but uh, she really has actually, the, the sheet line is, is pretty strong from 16 to two eights to start this year. So it was 16, 13, 12 last year, two eights this year. The last race was the first race that she went backwards, John. She went back to a 10. Yeah, well, that race was at Saratoga. You know, Sherry DeVoe started off at Saratoga on fire, but as the meet went on, her horses actually were not running so well. But, you know, take nothing away from this horse. This is clearly the horse to beat in here. The eights, two and three starts back are very strong. Last time out, she was up against it. It was a paceless race, so she didn't have any speed to close into. Okay. Blinkers go on on Saturday. Johnny V rides five to two on the morning line, and clearly the horse to beat. I uh, would try to hook up uh, some price horses underneath. That's the way that I'll be playing the race. Yeah, um, there are several uh, that stood out to me as well. Let's start off with the ones that um, I noticed. Uh, let's start off with the four. Uh, waves of mischief. Now, waves of mischief. Gaffleon on board. You got Walsh. So, anytime you get Gaffleon Walsh at twelve to one, you have to take notice, of course. Uh, the reason why this look, I know there's all four teens on the turf, and that's nothing special, especially when you're taking a look at the fact that the three, like we said, has got two eights and a ten this year. But when you got Gaffleon and Walsh at this price, the, the fact that the horse has won at Keeneland, the fact that the horse has won at this distance, so that's what it interests me a little bit. What, what about the four? 
I don't like the four. I think she's slow. I mean, 14's not going to get it done. You're going to have to run it 12, you know, or better to get in. And I think there are other horses that are longer prices that have just as good a chance or better than this horse. So why take this horse at a short price? All well, right. not short. I wouldn't say short. 12 to 1 is not short. But there are horses that are longer prices that look just as good to me. All right. The next one, uh, and again, I'm just going in order, is, is the biggest long shot that interests me would be the seven, Bushu and, or Buku. Yeah. Buku? Buchu. Buchu is Buchu. fine. I, I was using this horse as one of my horses. The horse has a nine, two starts back. We're in a 10 at Keeland earlier this year when uh, she ran her first race of the year as a three-year-old. She won that race. It was at Keeland. I'm definitely using this horse underneath. There are other good horses. Look at the two horse, Kate, Caitlin, her greatness. Okay. Caitlin, her greatness is 12 to one. You're getting Frankie Dettori. It's the two horse. Only one race on the grass. It was at Woodbine three races back, but this horse is getting really good. The last two races, both of them on synthetic, an eight and a 10. Yes, they were at Woodbine, and those Woodbine horses don't always run well. However, I think the line is very strong on this horse. The 10 and the 8, the last two races, again, both on synthetic. They say synthetic and turf are interchangeable. Well, if that's the case, this horse certainly has a shot. And at 12 to 1, I would be using this horse as well. By the way, it's uh, interesting that the horse has gotten better, even though it's gone from Pletcher to, uh, is it Kevin Attard? Yeah, he's a super trainer in Woodbine. He does very well there and... Uh, Listen, the horse got really good since this guy took over the training. Maybe it was Woodbine. Who knows? Yeah. Um, the only problem I have with this horse is that he, she's been on Lasix the last three races, and now she's coming off of Lasix. Maybe it was the Lasix that moved her up. I'm not sure. But if listen, if she's short, I'm not using her. But if she's sure. 10 to 1 or more, I'm using her for sure. Um, the other horse that uh, I like as far as uh, that I think may have a, a chance uh, is uh, Grayosh, the nine. You've, and, and, and I'm not even sure. You t I don't know. I kind of doubt in this field uh, that it's still going to be eight to one with Brown and Pratt combo. Uh, but what, what you've got to like about this horse is that even though the 12 is the best we've seen from Grayosh, the horse has pretty much gotten better uh, every race. And we're only talking about a three-year-old. Uh, coming off a grade two win, has two grade two wins, just seems to be improving. So uh, why not just gamble that the horse, she just keeps improving and maybe has a, you know, she just has another high again and maybe uh, it's enough for either first or second. I agree with you. I was using that was, I was using the three. She feels pretty on top of the two, Caitlin, her greatness, the seven, Buchu, and the nine, Grayer. So we're basically on the same page here. I like the three over the two, seven, and nine. All right. Yeah, that's. Uh, I was going with the three over the four, seven, and nine. So, um, and then as far as the rest of the field, I mean, unfortunately, uh, Kandala, we don't have any sheet numbers on. So we're kind of blind there. Uh, Jero on board for the first time. Uh, what do you do in these situations, John? Well, you watch the board, you see if they take any money. Uh, they usually take money because a lot of times they bet these Euro imports. Listen, the five is seven to two, and we have numbers on the five, uh, Soprano. And this horse is slow. So once you have a seven to two shot in the race that you want to play against, and that's the case with Soprano, well, then there's room. So we're going to use the favorite, but at least we're using the favorite with long price horses underneath. And the six looks overrated, oversubscribed. Matter of yeah. fact, it looks like the only reason the horse is getting six to one is because of Brown and Arnold or Ortiz Jr. on board. Hopefully they really bet that horse because off the numbers, she's like one of the slower horses in the race. And it's not like she's lightly raced. She has four starts. So basically she's showing us what she's going to do. I don't like that horse at all. All right, so there you go, uh, John. Uh, we're both going with the three. Why mess with it? Meanwhile, John's going two seven nine underneath. I'll go four seven nine underneath. That's the Grade One Queen Elizabeth Two Challenge Cup Stakes from Keeneland. Should go off about quarter to five on Saturday. So for our uh, viewers here on YouTube, we're checking out. Glad to be back. If you want more coverage, races six and nine at Keeneland. 
then uh, you got to check out Patreon. You got the link in the description. That's how you get there. Just $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. Thanks for tuning into our uh, show. We're back again. And again, and by the way, just a few more weeks, uh, we're, uh, we're talking Breeders' Cup. So can't wait for that. And hit subscribe. Absolutely. Thanks for reminding me, John. If you do not have the uh, opportunity to become a Patreon, then hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. Because once we get to 1,000 subscribers here on Horsepower PSN, all of our racing uh, analysis and picks are going to be available here on YouTube for free.